Now here we are on the Mount of Olives, facing the east of the Mount of Olives, and this is the direction to the Dead Sea. Once in history, during the time of the judges, there was a famine in Bethlehem. Bethlehem means the house of bread in the tribe of Judah, which means praise. And during the famine, there was a family, Elimelech and Naomi, who decided to go to Moab. And Moab is east of Jerusalem. They ran away from the hunger and they dwelt in Moab. They thought we are going there only for a little while, but they spent there a long time and their two sons got married in Moab. You know, you can run away from hunger, but you cannot run away from death. No one can run away from death. And Elimelech and his two sons died in Moab. Naomi was left alone with Orpah and Ruth, three widows. One day, Naomi hears that there is food again in Bethlehem. So she decides to return. That was a good action. It was wrong for Elimelech to go to Moab, but this is a good action for Naomi to go back. And Ruth and Orpah go with her. Do you know what Naomi says? Ruth and Orpah go back, go back. Later we find out that something happened to Naomi. Her name means pleasant. As Naomi, Ruth and Orpah decided to return back to Bethlehem, we hear Naomi speaking. Later we find out that Naomi calls herself Mara which means not pleasant, but bitter. And what does she say to these two Moabite women? Go back to your mother. Go back, find a husband. Go back, be sure you get children. All temporal issues, no eternal issues. It was wrong for Naomi to tell these Moabite widows to go back because she was successful for 50%. On the border of blessing, Orpah went back to Moab. We never hear of her anymore. But Ruth clung to Naomi. Maybe Naomi wanted to hide the sin of her sons that they married Moabite women. Because according to the law, this was forbidden. So Ruth clung to Naomi and says, where you go, I go. Where you die, I die. That commitment brought her to Bethlehem. While they lived in Bethlehem, Ruth studied the scriptures. You see, you always become wiser when you study the word, because in the word, she found out in the book of Leviticus that she has rights as a widow to go and glean in the field. She asked Naomi, is it right for me to go and glean in the field to get food for us? And Naomi agreed. So she went with the scriptures, with the yes of Naomi, trust in the Lord with all your heart, he will direct your steps. And she came to a certain field which belonged to Boaz, which was one of the two kinsmen redeemers who was able to change the situation of Naomi and Ruth. Ruth did not know that. Ruth did not know which land belongs to who, but the Lord directed her to the right field to meet the right man. She did not meet him, he saw her, and he loved her, and he cared for her, and he told the workers, don't go to another, and he told the workers, don't touch her, and he told Ruth, don't go to another field. And he blessed her. And so when she came back to Naomi with her arms full of grain and barley, Naomi was overwhelmed. Where did you go and glean? And she said, it was in the field of Boaz. At the time that Naomi heard 
the name Boaz, the bitterness left her. Boaz means, in him is my strength. Now, Ruth had come under the wings of the God of Israel. But now, Naomi is discipling Ruth again. Because the bitterness had gone. And Naomi said to Ruth, there is a time when the harvest is ripe. I want you to go to the field of Boaz and I want you at a certain time when Boaz lies down to lay at his feet. There is nothing impure about this. This is Middle Eastern. This was a sign that Ruth did not only want to live under the wings of the God of Israel, she also wanted to live under the wings of Boaz. Ruth was very brave. Ruth went, lay down at the feet of Boaz while he was sleeping. <laughs> and when he woke up, he found a woman at his feet. And he was surprised. And you know what Ruth said? I am Ruth. Not I am Ruth the Moabite. No, I am Ruth, your servant. And it's so beautiful when you read it because Boaz knows exactly why she is there. Boaz, Boaz does not misunderstand her. Boaz exalts her, praises her, protects her and sends her back early in the morning with a shawl full of food. Ruth had done all the work. Ruth had laid at his feet. But now it's time for Boaz to work. And Naomi says, Ruth, you've done what you had to do. Be still. Boaz will not stop working. Boaz decided something in private, but he went public. He went to the gate and the Lord directed it that the first kinsman redeemer came, that the elders came, and that there was a meeting. And that Boaz said, I want to redeem the land of Elimelech and Naomi. But you are first. So do you want to redeem the land? Do you want to have the land and buy the land? He said, yes, I like it. Then Boaz said, then you also need to take Ruth as your wife. He didn't like that. And he gave his shoe as a sign of, I'm giving you the authority to redeem the land of Elimelech, Machlon, and Kilion, and to take Ruth as your wife. It was quite a challenge for Boaz to do that. I love Boaz. He did everything straight. It's possible to live straight, to do things according to the law. Well, it's such a beautiful story because it started with a funeral and it ended with a wedding. It started with Naomi being bitter with empty hands, but it ended with Naomi not bitter anymore with a baby in her arms. And the most rom romantic part of it is that this book mentions for the first time the name of David the son of David, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our kinsman redeemer. Boaz means in him is my strength. Jesus redeemed us, not with money, but with his own blood on the cross. And so Boaz is a beautiful type of that great kinsman redeemer who came also from Bethlehem and who did not pay us back to himself with money, but he paid us with his own life. And now we can enjoy the unity. In chapter 1, Ruth only had her faith in the God of Israel. In chapter 2, she lived with the leftovers. In chapter 3, she lived in abundance. But in chapter 4, she came equal to Boaz. And so Yeshua, who was rich, became poor to make us rich. 
And this life is wonderful. Come, let us worship our kinsman redeemer, Yeshua HaMashiach. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. Christ the Lord.